Dude, get out of the way. I'm trying to shoot the video. Ref hasn't said anything. Video on. Woo! Oh, my Are you just gonna get hammered? Get me a toaster. Magic Angel Robot from Winnipeg. What the hell are you talking about? This team is ruining my life. Another overtime game. Good thing coffee exists. Rain it in, rain it in. The video just started. The Los Angeles Kings win 5-4 to four in double overtime over the New York Rangers. That makes this series 2-0. Which is so amazing because did you know that the Kings haven't led for a shut up? I will get to that goofiness. We will start with how we got there. First period, basically a carbon copy of game one. LA Kings, bang, bang, bang. Taking all the shots in the world. Great scoring chances. Did they go in? No. But Ryan McDonough's went in. 1-0 Rangers, and Matt Zuccarello, the Norwegian Hobbit, 2-0 off a nice little bank in. Let me tell you about Zuccarello. Is he good? Yep. Uh-huh. You know what it is. Zuccarello, 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 Zuccarello. No, what the that? Oh, we'll stop with the that. I remember talking about him years ago in a playoff video when I was still using, like, this crusty webcam, and I was talking about, ooh, the Leafs might get a player from Europe named Matt Zuccarello Awesome. He has since dropped the Awesome. But he has his first little stint in the NHL, and it goes me, me, me. Not horribly. And then he goes to the KHL. And yeah, it's during the lockup, but then it's a bit of an extended stay in the KHL. And I'm watching this guy and I'm going, he belongs. Matt Zuccarello's KHL team during the lockout had a top line of Evgeny Malkin, Nikolai Kuhleman, and the KHL's top scorer, Sergei Mazakin. They also had Sergei Gonchar in the backhand and Ryan O'Reilly. And I watched them and I'm like, man, Zuccarello could just be some dude on an awesome team, but instead, he is part of what makes that team awesome. Of course, the lockout out ended, all those guys left, and then Magneto course didn't win, and then won this season instead, but Zuccarello looked good. Gets back to the NHL, looks good. And then here we are in these playoffs. Zuccarello isn't just some short guy, the Norwegian Hobbit. He's not some stunt. He's a player, and it's 2-0 Rangers after one. But the Kings don't really let you stay happy for very long. Jared Stoll is scoring a goal at the speed of slow. Less than two minutes into the second, it's now a one-goal game. Henrik Lundqvist out of position. Kevin Klein in net, though. He could have made a kick save. I know I shouldn't be yelling at a defenseman for not making a save, but Klein, you never played, like, ball hockey at recess? You never played mini sticks? Sometimes you let the goalie wear the jacket inside out. Buddy, kick out that leg. Remember, kids, recess is a class, too. But a little over halfway through the second period, Kings power play Martin St. Louis. Oh, wow. Old school player, old school one-timer. That was filthy. You could say it wasn't a perfect shot. You could say it was a bit of a skipper. But I say it had character. And as the Kings try to mount a comeback, you're like, all right, that's the Rangers stepping on them. That's them finally asserting themselves. No. Willie Mitchell, rock it. Willie Mitchell's first of the playoffs. Not a moment too soon. A power play goal for the Kings this time and oh, they're within one until 11 seconds later Derek Broussard oh my god the Rangers are doing this thing Zuccarello in the box for the power play goal against and then he helps set up the answer. And you know, narrative's kind of a funny thing. Alain Vigneault receiving a ton of praise after that decision, and why not? Zuccarello takes a terrible penalty, puts him right back out there to make up for it, and he does. What if, what if he doesn't? What if Zuccarello makes another gaffe that leads to another Kings goal? Oh, Vigneault, and it, oh, I can't believe he did that, and oh, the Rangers were so lucky to get this far in the playoff, and oh, did, did the Canucks make the right move in getting rid of him? You know that's what would have happened, right? No, I'm not saying one's right and the other's wrong, I'm just saying that's what would happen for sure. And I know these videos are called LFR videos and the R stands for reaction but I'm trying not to always be reactionary. I'll obviously always be reacting to what happened but you got to observe the decision making in the process rather than the result. I'll let you think about that one. And now controversy! Less than two minutes into the frame again Rangers work on the start to the period. Dwight King gets credit for a goal that uh, should not have counted. Kings fan? Kings fans? No. It was goaltender interference and as Elliot Friedman said on CBC's Hockey Hockey Night in Canada at intermission, the NHL is thinking about and really should review these goaltender interference calls. No, oh, it's gonna slow the game down. Yeah? It's gonna slow the game down? Cool. Ban fights. Why? It's part of the game. No, it's not. You're not supposed to do it. They give you a penalty for it. Sometimes they kick you out of the game. Now, I am not saying ban fights. I wouldn't say ban fights. I'm just saying don't say goaltender interference review would slow down the game because it wouldn't. I am willing to sacrifice two to three minutes of waiting for a review call for an indefinite amount of time full of bitching and and anguish. Your options are this. Wait a sec while they review a call. Be tormented by the play for the rest of your life. And Lundqvist and the Rangers obviously thrown off. And finally, Marion Gabarik scores. His playoff leading 13th 
16th. Game is tied. We're going to overtime. First overtime. Holy crap. Kill. Hold on to your butt. The Rangers kill off what they had to kill off. The Kings kill off what they had to kill off. And now we go to second overtime. And in these videos, over the course of the last two months or so that we've been doing this, we've talked about the goal of the playoffs, the assist of the playoffs, the save of the playoffs, hit of the playoffs. How about the tip-in of the playoffs? Willie Mitchell puts another blast on net. That might have even been going wide. And Dustin Brown... Perfect. And there could be no better way to end this game. Rangers fans right now like, bitch, no. Fair point, sassy Rangers fan, fair point. And now the series heads back to New York with the Kings up 2-0. And what I want to address is this. The LA Kings have not led for a single moment in this series. I even heard a few analysts say the Rangers have dominated the Kings, but the Kings found a way to bleh bleh bleh. Dominated? The shots in the first two periods were 10 to 9 for the Rangers in the first and 12 to 11 for the Rangers in the second. 12 to 7 for the Kings in the third. 8 to 6 for the Rangers in the first OT and 6 to 1 for the Kings in OT2. That's 44 to 38 the shots for the Kings. In game 1 the shots were 43 to 27 for the Kings. Over the first two games the shots are 87 to 65 for the Kings. So what dominant team are you referring to? That's about the goal Goals, you don't understand. How do you get goals? Do you go, mm, goal, come on, goal. No, you shoot the thing at the net. The Kings are not getting dominated. At no point in this series have they been dominated. Take it from a Leafs fan that a two goal lead is not very dominating. Better yet, take it from a Rangers fan. Now, this isn't to say that the Rangers have not earned the leads that they've had. Quite the contrary. They're working their asses off out there and they're making this thing entertaining. And they were in LA. This thing's going back to New York. Remember when the Canucks had a two nothing lead over the Bruins? How about we all simmer down and watch the games. I don't know how you can watch the opening 10 minutes of both games so far and think that the Rangers have dominated from start to finish. Which isn't to say they won't do that when the series goes back to New York. Playoff hockey. You never know. You never know. Question of the game. Do you think that controversial goal should have counted? And regardless of your answer, do you think that goaltender interference should be reviewable? I obviously think it should be. What do you think? That's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really like to tell all your friends if you want internet that's as fast as mine, go to techsavvy.com and I will see you after game three when this series goes to New York. I'm running out of breath. And so are these teams. Nine periods in two games. Holy crap.